Several UNL Extension educators in eastern Nebraska have reported the presence of Japanese beetles. The insect can affect both corn and soybeans, but as Bob Wright said when we talked earlier this week, it's important you positively identify the Japanese beetle before you think about treating. It's a type of June beetle that's not a native Nebraskan insect. It's obviously imported from or introduced from Asia. It's been on the East Coast for a long time and has been moving into Nebraska the last 20 or 30 years. We're, we've seen populations in the towns around Omaha and Lincoln in the last five or six years. It's been showing up more in crop fields. And we've been recently getting some reports of either it or closely related species in uh, soybeans and corn and a lot of confusion about which, which beetle is which. What's the differentiation there? What are you looking for on the insect to see if it's actually the Japanese beetle? Okay, the Japanese beetle has a bright metallic green head and thorax or middle segment, and it also has some white tufts of hair on the side, five tufts of hair. The other beetle we're seeing is found throughout the state and is less damaging than the Japanese beetle. Some people call it the false Japanese beetle or the, the sand chafer because it's mostly in sandy soil areas like the Platte River Valley. It does not have any metallic green. It's about the same size, about a half inch long. Uh, it can vary a lot in color. It's usually sort of a light tan color, but it can also be dark brown or, or orange. Uh, it often, we, we see it sometimes, uh, people, it, likes, it gets attracted to people. It'll land on people with uh, light colored clothes in the, the field. The Japanese beetle this is? No, this is the this false, is the false beetle. Japanese okay. beetle. And it, it's, people are confusing it with the Japanese beetle. It's a lot less economic damaging than the Japanese beetle. So we don't want people treating for these false Japanese beetles if they don't have Japanese beetles in the area. What damage or what kind of damage would the Japanese beetle itself cause to the soybean plant? It basically it just feeds on the leaves and uh, typically uh, damage in both corn and soybeans is heaviest on the field borders. So if you can check field borders and catch them as they're moving into fields, maybe you can just spray the field border and not have to spray the whole field. Right now in soybeans and vegetative stages, we can stand up to 40% uh, defoliation. And as we get into reproductive stages, we can stand about 20% defoliation before you need to treat. And so that, a lot of fields, we're seeing soy, uh, Japanese beetles in soybeans, but I don't think we're not e at economic levels in a lot of cases. Later on in corn, the Japanese beetles can feed, well, can feed on the silks, just like corn rootworms do, but they're a lot bigger than rootworms. And again, field borders are typically damaged more than the, the center of the field. So that's something to watch for later in areas that have had Japanese beetles. I know we've had some populations the last couple of years in Saline County and Hamilton County in uh, damaging hotspots in, uh, in corn and soybeans, but it's not very widespread, but it's showing up more often in eastern Nebraska. Just treating with a common insecticide? Yeah, any of the pyrethroids or organophosphate insecticides would be good. So they're not particularly hard to kill uh, once, once you find them. Bob also says this is the time when producers can be scouting for corn rootworm larvae. His recent CropWatch article details tips on how to scout fields and options for treatment. We'll link to that on our website.